auto parts being my first favorite thing, the sex talk was would certainly be the second. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And so then around that time, so you're starting your next band. And how is that all coming about? Yeah. So Ghost just started in 2012. Um, and I had I had started writing. So I kind of like, so the auto parts broke up. And then I played in a couple of bands for a short period of time. And I was kind of like, I wasn't writing my own music in those projects. And then I was just kind of like, what am I doing? It was like September of 2011 or October or something. And I just locked myself in my room and I started writing songs and I thought I was done. Like I, I had like said to myself, it's time to hang this old hat up. You're, you know, you're, you're not done. I mean, you're done with this lifestyle. You're done with playing music. Cause it's just so much like emotional work too. Oh yeah. It's, it can be very heartbreaking. <laughs> it's very heartbreaking. Yes. That's yeah. a good way to put it. And so I just was like, you're done. And then I locked myself in my room and I started writing songs like I'd never written before. And then, so the following year I, um, I was like, I think I'm going to put a band together. And then I did. And that was a lot of fun. A couple of, a couple of people from the old kiss or kill days helped me. Uh, Mac and Martin from the letter openers. They oh, me. I love them. <laughs> yeah, they helped me out the first year. And then um, I met Jared in September of 2012. And it's basically been me and Jared since. In 2013, um, we were joined by our former drummer, Tony, um, who played with us 13 and 14. And then in 14, we went to New York and we recorded like a just a completely like electronic style album with no real drums. And then in 2016, we came back to California and started working with Tony again and um, his wife, Linda, who's a keyboard player. And then, so we recorded a bunch of music with them 2017 and 2000, yeah, 2017. And we're just now releasing some of that music. Wow. We're just Such a long releasing, process. Yeah. But we're here in Portland now and we're working with, um, a female singer up here who I think is going to try to hopefully take over a lot of the vocals for Gosha. So I'm kind of, you know, so you don't want to, you don't want to sing, huh? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why not? I don't, um, I don't, first of all, I don't think my range is very great. Like I can do some things really good. I can certainly hold a melody and I can sing in key. So I'm, I'm fine with it, but I like, I'm not, I feel like I want, my music needs something more. So I'm super excited to write, continue writing, but would love to work with more, um, more musicians to like, like having Michelle as a singer has been really cool because her voice is really great. And we have a song coming out hopefully in the next couple of months. We're just actually going to today. Hopefully we're, we've been recording outside <laughs> at her house oh, her cool. <laughs> because of the pandemic. Um, so we have to go and finish up some backing vocals hopefully tonight and then we'll be able to ready be ready to like what's that song called this song is called this rapture this rapture okay yeah yeah it is nice to have in bang sugar bang i had matt to sing with and now i sing by myself and and i don't like it <laughs> it's like too much it's too much it's nice to have at least if you're not gonna do it's nice to have someone to share it with for me anyway um 100 percent. yeah yeah that was the nice thing about z the auto parts and yes yeah it's so it's really nice because i think what michelle and i really want to do is more like dueling vocals because i can hold the melody or you know just like finding different ways to add texture to the music plus you know i i feel like having other people like as much as i would love to be a soul songwriter um i feel like having other people to collaborate with really helps me branch out otherwise it kind of starts to sound like mono you know totally yeah. totally it's so fun actually to see what happens to an idea when you have two or three different people working on it it gets better without a it doubt gets better. it's like it requires so much more patience and that's I know. one reason I'm always like fuck music I can't do it anymore because I often, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it from from like the song's inception to finally like releasing it on streaming platforms can take years. Like I said, the stuff that we're recording that we recorded in 2017 is now coming out in 2020. Well, I wrote those songs in like 2014. 
So you're talking about like six years before it's like even out. out into the right. World. And you kind of, you probably move on creatively yeah. too, where you're exploring <laughs> different things and you're like, oh man, this, <laughs> this is my old baby. Yeah. Yeah. This baby's like gone off to college by now. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know? So, yeah. <laughs> Oh, totally. That's my issue with, with music. It's like, I can't be, I can't stay, keep, it doesn't keep up with me. Right. Right. Yeah. Because just the record, I mean, it would be nice to be infinitely rich and just have someone else just do it all really fast. You could pay them and that would be that. But the reality is it's, it's not like that for me. And so, yeah, it takes so long to get a song out. I mean, oh Yeah. It's it's a frustrating process. Yeah. Well, it'd be great. It, even if you have, because we record most of our own music ourselves, but like getting now, you know, working with other people. Well, now I have to. We have to schedule with Michelle so that we can go and get her vocals recorded. You know what I mean? Plus practicing, and so even if you have all of the stuff, like getting that song to be the way that you really want, it takes time. Yeah, definitely. And coordinating schedules. Uh, that's why a two person band, when you're, especially if you're partnered with the other members, great. <laughs> you wake up and you're like, Hey, you want to rehearse right now? Sure. <laughs> yes. yes. You know, that's what, that was our ideal. But for us, we felt like it just didn't work out that way. I felt I would lose interest. You know, we lived, when we moved back to LA, I had a four bedroom, my, my house was a four bedroom house. So we could have a studio in there. We were going to like, record all the time, but I lost, I, I didn't have the motivation. So yeah. it definitely for me requires like more than one person, I think. Yeah. It is nice to have that sort of um, friction, but I just remember living in LA. It's like, Oh, if you got that third person in your band and your rehearsal space is downtown and you live in Hollywood, and then how are you getting, and you're all bartenders or whatever, like, how are you going to like, how's that going to work? You know? <laughs> So hard, yes. It was so hard. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about this is a fun question. Tell me about the weirdest crush you've ever had. Have you ever had like a super weird crush? Oh yeah, I have crushes on weird people all the time. Um, <laughs> gosh, I'm kind of embarrassed to even think about them. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sometimes I like to throw in just like a random question, a random just question just... like a weird question yeah. that I had. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think in, I, I'm going to talk about college because it's so far removed from my life. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, there were there was these there was a couple that I used to see both women, and someone told me that one of the girls wrote poetry, and I developed a crush on her. <laughs> Just because she wrote poetry? Yes. Did you ever read any of her poems or hear any no, of her poems? No. Oh. So you didn't even know she could have been a sucky poet. She could have been a sucky poet. But that was a lot <laughs> in San Francisco. Everyone, they, I, was, I think I, I had crushes on all of, the, all of the girls that were like playing guitar and writing poetry. Yeah. I mean, anyone with a guitar and you have poets. <laughs> well, and, I, and at the time I wasn't. I wasn't pursuing music at all. Like I was classically trained in piano, but I didn't know how to play guitar. And I had write, written some poetry in high school and whatnot. Um, and so when I got to San Francisco, I was like this like bright eyed, like, oh, look at all these people, you know, writing music. And um, so I was really enamored with anyone that did that. Oh, yeah. It's, it, you know, any if someone who's really talented, of course, you didn't know that person if they were talented or not. But somebody who's really talented is just like very attractive no matter what, you know. And that's part of the hard part of being a young person is realizing like just because you're attracted to their talent doesn't mean they're a good match for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very true. Yeah. I've had some other crushes on people. I've had crushes on people who I got into relationships with that were that just were really bad. Yeah. Crushes kind of. Crushes are kind of like misleading. Very. Because a lot of it too is like a physical reaction and that can really mess with the mental processing, <laughs> you know, yeah. like just because I'm really attracted to this person doesn't mean that I should act on it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I used to have a type of like a, a guy who was just like, fuck the world. Like, I don't care. I'm going to drink all day and just like be an artist and da, 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 da. 
which is still very attractive to me. But now if I meet people like that, I'm always like, I know you. I know your type. Been there, done that. I'm not, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, who's your, who, what's your weirdest or bravest crush? Oh my gosh. That's a tough, well, I had a kid, I had a crush on this kid. Oh my God. All growing up, Jeremy Schoenrock. <laughs> I, I loved him and he had like curly, curly blonde hair, which I always loved, like really curly hair and like these blue eyes. And I, I just loved him. And I don't even know if I knew him that well, but I just, I just, thought, I just liked him. And I used to pray like, oh God, please let Jeremy Schoenrock like me, please, please, please. And like, he didn't, get, he didn't know who the heck I was. I probably liked boys way more than, um than they thought about girls back then. I think I've always been a little like, Boy crazy. really super yeah <laughs> it, boy crazy it's not even that it's just like I don't know if it was Disney movies or what but I definitely felt this like I should get a man you know I'm like five why do I feel like I need that <laughs> uh-huh Disney movies could do that to you <laughs> I know if I I mean I've always said if I ever had a child I, I don't know that I'd let them watch them but uh, then one day Jeremy Schoenhock did like me but oh. I was like 18 and could care less <laughs> I had outgrown my crush. I'm like, you got to be careful what you ask the universe for because it may give it to you, but you got to specify like time periods and like exactly how that's going to happen because yeah, it get, I got what I wanted. It's just I didn't want it anymore. <laughs> that happens. Yeah, I would definitely yeah. experience situations like that too. So um, yeah, it's like that monkey's paw thing. I don't know if you ever read that short story, but it's like if you make the wish, but then like, it could be, there could be a really bad side effect to that wish if you're not very specific about exactly how you want it to come true. <laughs> I just watched um, the Eurovision with Will Ferrell. Oh, I haven't seen that. It's pretty funny. It's they, cause they, they um, try to make, you know, make it to Eurovision as singer, as a, you know, singer songwriter duo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, um, there's a lot of that in there, like a lot of wishing to the elves because they're from Iceland. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, I got to watch it. You gotta watch I love it. anything with him. It. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of wishing to the elves and, and getting what they wish for, but at the wrong time or <laughs> like that. Yes, so. I'm familiar with that. Yeah. So if, yeah. so if you now could like talk to you at like 18, what would you tell? Oh, what would God. you tell 18 year old you? 18 year old me to, I had no, gosh, I had no, I didn't believe in myself. I didn't think I could. I did not think I could have a creative career at all, but I didn't know what I was going to do or what I was going to be. So I wish my 18 year old person would have, someone would have said, Hey Mo, pay attention to all the different things that there are to do out there. And you don't have to decide what that thing is. Now you get to, you get to, you get to decide later. And I think Mm. I felt a lot more like, comfortable like I have time you know because I often off like I remember graduating from college at like 20 oh I guess I was 22 23 ish or something and like I'm gonna play music now and just feeling this pressure like time was running out you know like I had to do it I had to do it in the next five years you know and like I totally felt that too yeah and I wish someone would have told me like, no, it's not a five year thing. You don't make it anywhere in five years. You keep going, right? You keep like, what am I trying to say? Like, it just, it doesn't, it, there's no like final destination. It just keeps going. So do what you like and just keep doing it. And you'll, you'll hit achievements and accomplish things along the way. Right. But there's no like end goal. Oh, you've made it. Because you never make it. Totally. <laughs> no, I'm sure even people like, t- well, maybe Taylor Swift or someone thinks they made it, but maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> but she's going to keep going. She's like, you know, now she has a career. Like, does that mean you've made it or you've just made a career, right? Yeah. And the more more success that you have with it, it seems like it's more. It's not like it gets easier. There's more to do, you know? Um, yeah. 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 It keeps going. Yeah. I remember when I turned 30, I was homeless. I was living at my dad's house with Matt because our band had like exploded and we had no place to go. And I was just like, this sucks. Like I'm 30. 
I had all these ideas about what my life was going to be like. Like I was going to have done all this stuff by then. And I'm like, I am literally homeless. 